Yo, what's happening everybody? Today's August 27th, 2015. Um, it's a Thursday, it's not Sunday. Lucky you. Um, it's been a rough day, man. Rough day, rough week. Life is rough right now. Um, this is actually my first shave since Sunday. I'm looking homeless, as you can see. Um, also, I don't know if this is able to be visible in the uh, in the shot, but you see that? That's why. That's why I shaved my head, because this uh, this hair gr hair growth up here is abysmal. Shameful is what it is. Uh, so today, today actually, um, excuse me. Today actually, um, I a very cool guy, Brandon. Um, Glenn, actually, uh, he sent me some stuff the other day, completely out of left field, was not expecting it. Um, that was really cool. Thank you, Brandon. Um, so, um, he sent me some stuff because, you know, he, he saw some of my videos. Um, he said that um, I kind of hipped him to um, the brand of soap that I'm going to be using. Also, the brush, some of the brushes that I use um, kind of, I guess, uh, hip, I, don't, I don't know that I hipped him to the brushes, but I know he said that I had something to do with the fact, um, you know, with him being able to get one, so, um, that's really cool, Brennan, um, today we're going with Buffalohead Manish Boy, first go with this one, actually, I've not used it before, um, it's going to be good, because not only is it another Buffalohead creation, ABC, another bad creation, for those of you old like me, it also comes from, you see that right there, that's Nashville, that's where it comes from, because a lot of good things come from Nashville. Uh, today's brush is going to be a Began Morrison Forndren 3XL Finest in Ivory. Um, and uh, it's time to get rid of all this vile hair. <clears throat> This is uh, a modified barber shop scent, from what I understand. Um, it's good. It's not. Uh, it's not the strongest scent in the world, but that's okay because quality is always better than quantity. All right. It's been a while. It's been quite some time since I've used this brush. This is actually. Of all of the stumpy handles that I own, this is a very comfortable one. The proportions of this one as compared to a Chubby 3, um, this is a, like I said, this is a 3XL, so it's comparable to a Chubby 3 from, from Simpsons. Um, this is actually the brush that I used in the uh, comparison video from the other day of Manchurian versus Finest. Um, This, this this handle is, is exceptionally comfortable. It's not as it's it's taller, or it feels taller in the hand, or maybe more slender or something. But I prefer the feel in the hand of this brush to the feel of the um, Chubby Three handles. Not to mention that uh, a Manchurian Chubby Three knot is. Hold on a second. And I probably am going to bleed from right there. I've got something terrible. I don't know what it is there, but it's going to suck. And I know that I'm going to, I know that I'm going to cut it open. Um, the uh, Chubby 3 Manchurian knot is, uh, that is like the personification of excess. Good thing. I love it, but man, it's, it's a little much. Razor today is going to be, since I've got so much growth to contend with, I have a, this is an above the tie H2 on a Maggard MR5 handle, and this is going to be the first use of one of these blades. This came from Hector, gracias papá, te lo agradezco. This is a Gillette 7 o'clock. These are the blue platinums that are discontinued, and I hope I don't fall in love with these blades. Here we go. Ooh. Light touch with this razor. This is one of those razors that you don't really see people use too often. 
And that's because uh, in above the above the law, <laughs> above the tie parlance, H is for heavy, which is uh, heavy growth is what that uh, is what that's about. Speaking of above the law, those of you that are old as me and had the same musical tastes that I did back in the early 90s may recognize the name above the law and the reason I'm bringing that up is because I actually went to the movie theater yesterday which is a very very rare thing for me to do but I did go to the theater yesterday and I watched straight out of Compton I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, usually on these above the tie razors, I uh, I usually use them with uh, above the tie handles. I don't know what it is about this MR5 handle and this H2 head, but they are so very complimentary. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I went, I went to, um, I went to the theater yesterday and I watched uh, Straight Outta Compton. I, uh, before I got into dance music, I was very, 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 very much into rap. <laughs> particularly West, well, you know, it's funny, I say particularly West Coast rap, but in retrospect, I had a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of East Coast hip hop that I absolutely loved back then, so I guess I just uh, I liked it all so long as I thought it was good, regardless of where it came from. But back then, I would have told you to quote one Mr. WC of WC and the Mad Circle fame, um, West Coast till the casket drops. But like I said. In retrospect, I actually liked a whole lot of East Coast rap. Um, so the movie was good. Um, I, um, you know, it, it's, it really picked up, or I shouldn't say picked up. Um, 1988 is when Straight Outta Compton first came out. Um, and I remember hearing the tune. Excuse me one second. I have to be really careful over here. Oh, and I think I got it. Doesn't take much from this razor. Oh no, I didn't get it. This lather is so exceptionally smooth or slick, excuse me. If you guys don't have any of this buffle head soap, you absolutely, you need to get it. Um, it's it's just, it's good, man. It's got, some of the some of the ingredients are a little bit different than most shave soaps out there. But the stuff just rules, man. It's so, so good. And the scents are actually, very well done. Um, yeah, they're just, uh, some of them I guess are a little mature, which is fine with me. I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about a guy, me, that uh, I'll wear Chanel Egoist in the summertime, and I have a lot. And if you've smelled that one, then you know that's not really the most summertime of things. Anyway. Straight out of Compton. Yes, it was good. The storytelling was good, or I should say, the telling of the story was good. Um, they used music very effectively. There was a couple parts that really, really stood out to me. The one main one, because I've got other things to talk about. The one main one is uh, as soon as you know when Ice Cube made his departure from N.W.A. Um, you know, they cut to a scene of him recording in the, um, in the recording booth with the Bomb Squad. The Bomb Squad is uh, an East Coast group of guys that were Public Enemies producers. Um, yeah, I did get myself. That's actually a little, it's, it's a lot better than I figured it would have been. Um, that's like an ingrown hair or something. The Bomb Squad was Public Enemies producers. As soon as uh, Ice Cube rolled out from... NWA, he hooked up with the Bomb Squad, 
and they uh, produced his first solo album, America's Most Wanted. And America's Most Wanted is very, very, very good. And the title cut from the t from the uh, LP, of course, is um, America's Most Wanted. And this soap is so slick that I can't even grab my ear. Um. The title cut has one of the coldest beats ever written, and I'm really upset that I can't think of what the main sample, who, what the main sample was, but uh, man, it's a good tune. Anyway, so, you know, as soon as he, when he rolled out, they cut to a scene of him in the uh, recording booth with the Bomb Squad recording that particular tune, and uh, I pretty much squealed with delight, like literally, out loud, in public in front of people. Didn't care. It had been a long time since I'd heard that tune. And to hear it after all this time on, I mean, it's a movie theater. The sound is pretty good, you know? So to hear that tune over that half decent PA after all this time, man, that just, I was not expecting that and it got me good. Um, anyway, so the movie's very good. Um, for those of you that are looking back after watching the movie, um, you know, in, uh, in the annals of West Coast music rap history. There, uh, there was an LP, actually it was an EP if I'm not mistaken, released by Eazy-E in 1993, well after the NWA drama played out called Cold 187 Dr. Dre. 187 is spelled 187 U-M. The whole thing is on YouTube. Somebody actually uploaded it as one, uh, as one file and uh, put the little time markers so you can search through it. But uh, yeah, that was a really good release. I bought that one when it came out, just hoping that it would be good. But it actually ended up kind of blowing my mind. A very good album. Um, so yeah, look for that one on YouTube. Um, and if you like it, you should buy it. <laughs> Birthday was a couple weekends ago. The 15th, again, was the date of my birth. Um, August 15th of 1977, if you must know. Um, so, uh, went to uh, Atlanta last weekend to celebrate. Kevin Saunderson was playing. To the astute among you, or the ravers among you, Kevin Saunderson, that name should ring a bell. I've actually mentioned him numerous times. He's one of the uh, Belleville Three, the three people accredited with uh, the creation of techno. All three of the gentlemen have a nickname. Kevin's nickname was The Elevator. He was given that nickname because he was the first one to, uh, he's the one that wrote the first, like, big hits. Namely, Big Fun and Especially Good Life. Big, uh, Good Life was a, was a big one. I think he, uh, I think they said he sold six million of those. That's a lot. Um, so Kevin Saunders from Planet Atlanta, a couple, uh, or on the 15th, excuse me, the 22nd. Um, I think I mentioned Whoa, I got myself good holy Jimmy right there. Um, blade gap on this one is to be respected. Hold on.
I'm gonna have to, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to stick to that one. One second, BRB. Oh man, that's a, that's a good one. This is going to suck. This is going to require a bit of pressure. Anyway, um, well, this stuff tastes funny. Um, also, it dries out your mouth. So Kevin Saunderson played it at Lance on the 22nd, and uh, I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned it on here, but uh, I was kind of already, already upset even before um, getting to the thing, because the last quite a few times that I've seen Kevin Saunderson, he's played house. A million people in the world play house. Why do you want to play house, Kevin Saunderson? So that's kind of what I was expecting. But, I mean, it's Kevin Saunderson. He has a very good taste in music. So it's going to be good. Um, okay, he didn't play house. Kevin Saunderson played techno. It took him a little bit to find the groove of the room. Thankfully, everybody in the room wanted to hear techno. Although... I'm pretty sure that I had quite a bit to do with that. Um, most of you, I would say probably all of you, except maybe one to three of you that watch these videos, have never been in a club with me. I, um, I'm a one-man party. I, um, that should be good. I, um, I don't want to say that I bullied the DJ, but I kind of bullied the DJ. Um, I don't really have much of a problem at all with getting loud and getting hype in a club. Um, and it's funny because a lot of times people won't get hype in the club until they see somebody else get hype. A lot of times I am that first guy. Oh, Jiminy. A lot of times I am that first guy. So, you know, I get hype. People take my lead and it turns into a party. So, you know, he started playing a little bit hard, again, trying to find the groove of the room, and I was into it. I was making my approval known audibly. And uh, I guess everybody else kind of went along with it. And uh, he started playing hard. It was good. Hold on, let me do this real quick. Word. Um, so... Uh, he started playing techno, and it was good. So, hats off to you, Mr. Saunderson. I really enjoyed that. This big chasm that I carved into my lip is going to, it's going to heal funny. Not looking forward to that. I went a little bit too low on the buffing motions. That's all right. All right. Pretty much that. <clears throat> I got uh, I got one of these things. This is like a cover for this uh, feather razor. So I got it. Honestly, I don't really travel like I used to, but I tend to drop this thing a whole lot. Excuse me. <laughs> um. I tend to uh, drop this thing, or it tends to fall, I should say. And I don't want to take the risk of it damaging the blade that's loaded in the thing. Um, so yeah, I got this to, uh, to protect it. 
Also, these blades, I uh, I picked up a, a trailer for a mongoose the other day. Thank you, Tom Jans. I used it once. It's weird. I used it with the regular Artist Club blade. I'm thinking that I would probably, ooh, I would probably enjoy it a little bit more with the, um, with the super. So I think I'm going to do that. And this is pretty much coming to an end. All right. Man, the post-shape feels on this soap, you guys. It's exceptional. Not the worst, not the worst. Aside from this chasm that I carved into my lip meat. Today's aftershave is going to be Brandon Doom's Lament. This is from Brandon himself. He made this, you guys. It's good. I've, this, I've used it once before. It's a uh, huge lavender. And uh, if there's one thing in this world that I like, it's huge lavenders. The ingredients on this one are Everclear Witch Hazel, Glycerin, Lavender Essential Oil, and Menthol. Mm -mm, that hurts. There's the menthol. Doing its tin. And that is going to be that. Hope you guys are okay. Um, there was a, a hurricane that came through uh, today, Puerto Rico. Um, Hurricane Erica. Um, thankfully, my family's okay. Um, I was kind of tripping on that for, for a while. Um, it's just a part of the rough week that I've been having. Anyways, um, I hope you guys are, I hope you guys have been well. I hope you'll be well. And I hope to see you guys the next go around. Peace.